Yo, what's up, everybody? Yeah, welcome to the Mike Dolce Show. Today, we're talking about home gyms, baby. That's right, we're going to get you fit. God dang pandemics and all the annoyances that we bring, that they bring. So no matter where you are in the world, you are worried about the lockdown, the shutdown. Is your gym closing down? We went through this in spring and summer, and now we might be going back into it. Regardless of my opinions here, I wanted to share your immediate takeaways. What do you need to know right now to be ready to supplement your gym workouts or to hide in your cave and get down and dirty and make gains during the next possible quarantine. Well, I'm going to share this with you. And also, I'm going to tell you some of my favorite ancillaries. I want to tell you, number one, what you need to know. Now, many of you have been scavenging Walmart and Amazon and Target and Craigslist and, and, and Facebook Marketplace and everything else trying to figure out what do you need? What can you get? But most of you guys, you start, you're starting in the wrong place. You're starting from the wrong perspective. And let me explain this to you. More importantly than the training influence, do I need bands? Do I need kettlebells? Do I need dumbbells? Do I need barbells? That's not the problem here. The problem number one is where are you going to train? Where are you going to train first and foremost? Are you going to train in your living room, in your bedroom, on your back deck, in your garage? Do you live on the second floor of an apartment complex? Do you have neighbors below you, next to you? Who knows? Do you have access to your own private man cave, maybe? What's the clearance? Can you do standing overheads? Can you fit a power rack with a chin bar in there? This is an issue for a lot of people. I know people who buy power racks. Like, What's the point of buying a power rack? You had a power rack, but it bare, it touches your damn ceiling. You can't do chin-ups inside of it. You're not going to be loading barbells because you have 95 pounds. You can't find plates anywhere. You don't have a proper barbell, so what's the point of a power rack? Doesn't make sense. Like, no, I have a power rack, but I have a, a you know 12-foot ceilings here. I got no problem with that. Now, let me take this back for a second. The most important part. You need number one is your flooring. I've said this before in different streams and different videos. The gym floor will dictate what you can actually do. Your gym flooring. Some of you, you're stuck in an apartment. I get it. Sucks. I get it. You're in an, in an apartment. Okay. You're training on a carpet. Okay. Not ideal. But guess what? You're gross. You're going to be sweaty. You're going to be rolling around and flumping around. That's not comfortable. I've done it before. Not comfortable. It sucks. I don't want to work out anymore in that shitty environment. Let's think about the gym floor. Sure, you can roll out some crappy $15 yoga mat. Eh, that's okay, but that sucks because it's constantly moving under your feet. What you might consider in any environment is what they call trailer mats. Now you can get, I have here in my facility, you saw on the thumbnail, I'm actually going to do a gym tour. If you go to my 20 minute fitness network, which is one of our other channels here on YouTube, free workouts and such that we started in the beginning of the year, but you can go and see a little snapshot of how the gym used to look. And it's being updated right now. We have half inch. Is it, it three by four or four by six? Um, trailer mats. This is exactly like you see in every major commercial gym, except they're a fraction of the price. I would strongly recommend whether you're training at home, you're training in a garage, you have some other facility, you need at least two of these trailer mats. They're either called trailer mats or stall mats or barn mats. Do not pay the inflated price for the gym flooring. You're going to be so, just send me the extra 80%. I will gladly put it to good use. Now, when you have that, you have your flooring because the flooring will dictate, can you deadlift? You can't deadlift on carpet. 
right? You, you just can't do it. You can't deadlift on mom's kitchen floor. You can't do it. Don't do it. It's a waste of time. Maybe you can go out back outside and you can move your plates outside. Maybe you can do that. But at the same time, man, that sucks, right? You want all of your stuff to be in the same spot, the same place, and you don't move it. Set up your training space like you set up your reading space, you set up your art space, you set up your gaming space. Give your exercise space the same respect that you give your Fortnite or your Xbox space, right? Have your setup and everything's there, everything's put together. So when it's time to train, you just walk over and start training. You don't waste time dragging everything out. It's really important. It's really important. Trust me on this. You just want to go. Right. Maybe it's a spare bedroom. Maybe it's the side of, of, of your bedroom. It's a dedicated space to train. This is what you need to know. Any of you training home right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You do your training and then you put everything away. Then it's a mess and you can't find your dumbbell. Or your wife's got her stuff in the way, your kid's stuff. You got to clean up stuff. And you're like, ah, fuck it. You're in the wrong headspace. And if you enter the training atmosphere in the wrong headspace, your workout's fucked. I want to make sure when you're training, you're training at your best because we're making gains in this off season. If you're not about making gains, well, go for a walk. That's fine. I'm not mad at that. Go for a walk. Do a little yoga, DIY yoga on YouTube. Cool. Done. Nice. I'm not mad at that. If that's you, that's you. That's not me. That's not me. I'm here to make fucking gains, man. I'm going to be unleashed at the end of this off season, this quarantine in the best shape of my life. I'm not fucking around. So I don't care what's going on in the outside world. What happens in my cave is serious business. And I want to get you mentally right, get you prepared. Right now, there's still time to pick up equipment, right? But your equipment is predicated upon the training floor. Ideally, you're in a garage or a basement with a concrete slab. If you have a concrete slab that you can put these half-inch trailer mats on, you can do everything. You can do everything. If you have a solid, you know, 10 feet, 10 foot ceilings would be ideal. If you have a 10 foot ceiling, you're good to go. Maybe not. Maybe you only have an eight. Maybe you have a seven foot. That's okay. You can do seated overheads and other presses like that. We're going to get to that in a second. So the half inch trailer mats are mandatory. Next, you need to have two sets of dumbbells. Minimum. I'm starting with minimums and then I'm going to talk a bon talk bonus. Two sets of dumbbells, something light. Light dumbbells are between 5 and 15 pounds, something heavy. Heavy dumbbells are between 25 and 50 pounds. You need two pair. I say start lighter. Start lighter because that gives you the ability to scale. You can do more reps of compound movements with lighter dumbbells. If you accidentally get too heavy of a dumbbell, guess what? Your form sucks. You probably get hurt and you can't do some motions. You'd be surprised at how many grown ass men cannot press 50 pound dumbbells over their head. I'd much rather you as their heavyweight. I'd much rather you start with 25s as your heavyweight and get really good, press them 30 or 50 times. I'm not mad at you. I'm happy about that because we can then scale. You will find another set down the road. This is to get you started. So one is we have those trailer mats. So you have a proper training floor and they are dedicated. You put them down, you set them up, you leave them there. Those trailer mats, I should say, should be able to host a barbell. Barbells are traditionally, I, I think, six feet or seven feet. I forget. I got 20 of them next to me right now. Um, actually, they look closer to seven, maybe eight feet even. Uh, I got some of the Texas bars and Ohio bars staring at me right now. But regardless, wide enough to host a deadlift. Barbell on the floor. So we got our deadlifts. We got our RDLs. We got our pen lays. Uh, we got our, our barbell hack squats. We got lots of motions like that. Also big enough to host your body, your fat ass jumping around, right? Because there are a lot of things we can do. We can be doing, we can do burpees. We can do walking lunges, right? There's So you want them to be set up 
um, horizontally, not kind of stacked fat, right? So we don't want them to be like this per se. We want them to be stacked like that, if that's uh, easy for you guys to understand. That gives you better space to do two or three reps of walking lunges back and forth. Trust me, this is going to be helpful. We have two sets of dumbbells. We have light dumbbells and we have heavy dumbbells. Lights are between 5 and 15. That way we can do dumbbell side laterals. We can do bicep curls and, and lying, you know, uh, single arm skull crushers and such. And then we have heavier dumbbells, 25 to 50s. We can do our bent over um, dumbbell rows. We can do a clean and press with the dumbbell. We can do standing militaries. We can do seated, uh, not seated, excuse me, um, lying floor presses. We can do live Lots and lots of dumbbell work. The next thing, the last thing is you can get a canvas bag. You can get a rucksack, right? I want a big bag that you can actually turn into an unconventional implement that you can load because now what? Because now I can take my 50 pound dumbbells. I can take my 15 pound dumbbells. I can add all of those into my rucksack. I can get some, some books or some whatever other heavy shit I have in my house. I could put that into this rucksack now, this big old canvas bag, like a hockey bag, whatever you can envision. And now I can really get nasty. Now I can throw it over my shoulder with a couple hundred pounds and I can do walking lunges. I can do body weight squats. I can do zerchers holding this, hugging this, holding it to my body. Right. I can do a hell of a lot more activities with I'll keep saying rucksack because that's really what I want you to get a heavy ass military camping grade, hiking grade rucksack that you can pack and not worry about it. Breaking a canvas rucksack. You can get those dirt cheap everywhere. Costs you nothing to get these into your arsenal. I want to get one of those. And usually I'm going to get, I got like, uh, um, you know, three foot of, of, of rope, you know, paracord works. I got a few, um, I forget what they're called right now that are slightly um, thicker than that. And what I do is I just double knot, tie that thing around, tie the end up, and I'm not worried about anything peeling out. I can hold it upside down. Nothing's going to shake out. Does this make sense, guys? Leave comments. Let me know it makes sense. This <laughs> Red Army's cat was tight, but I get that. I understand that. So training floor, most important. You don't even need any weights with a proper training floor. We can get nasty with body weight stuff. I'm going to start filming videos for you guys, whether it goes on this channel or it goes on my 20-minute fitness channel. Check out Mike Dolce's 20-minute fitness network. Subscribe to that channel because I'm going to start dropping a lot more videos, body weight exercises. I'm probably going to start doing more of these 20-minute workouts with you guys. If you want to come train with me, we're going to do live workouts and pre-recorded workouts. I got some hot, 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 hot fitness friends that are actually going to be coming in and, and, and performing some great videos and workouts for you. I say hot with all due respect, friends of my wife, friends of our family, of course. Um, but really nice to look at too. Nothing wrong with that. You know, you want to, you don't want to be staring at this dude all the time, right? There's certainly, um, better looking young ladies out there than this guy. I don't look that good in a G string. I don't look bad. I don't look bad. I just don't look that good or like yoga pants because nobody will be in G spring. We're PG 13 channel, by the way. Um, remember I have the humor, sense of humor of a 13 year old boy with good manners though. Good manners. Um, so Training floor, bang, done. Light and heavy dumbbell. You can find dumbbell. I'm going to tell you, don't spend more than a dollar a pound on a dumbbell. But don't also worry about spending an extra couple dollars to get some dumbbells in your house, right? You will regret it. You will regret it. Dumbbells, steel dumbbells, you'll have them forever. You'll have them forever, right? You will get the use out of them. Most, most people will spend more money on a fancy dinner then they will on dumbbells they'll use for the rest of their life, right? I have all the equipment I have, man, I got, I have enough, right? I got kettlebells that go from 4 kg all the way up to, is it 44 kg? Um, and I got multiple sets of each. I've been collecting this shit for years. When I ran bigger gyms and all my, my gyms and classes and all that stuff, I got dumbbells that go from, from three pound dumbbells all the way up to 150s. I got some adjustables that I can get up to a buck 80. Um, you know, I, I row with those. I'm not pressing those for sure. But anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm ranting here. Now, what are extra, extra? So we have 
we have the training mat or the, the, the stall mats, right? The trailer mats or stall mats. Remember, those are like 20% the cost of gym flooring. Don't pay for gym flooring, my friends. Go to trailer mats or stall mats. You can go to a local feed supply shop and find stall mats, barn mats. Look for those first. Look for those first. Do a Google search, trailer mats or stall mats. You should, most of us should be able to drive within 30 minutes of where you're sitting right now. You should be able to find a feed supply shop. You might be able to find uh, um, some sort of construction shop where you can get the trailer mats. Maybe you guys can share where those are actually found. The light and heavy dumbbells. I don't care if they're the pink Jane Fondas. I don't care if the old school Arthur Joneses. Get them in your house. And then a canvas rucksack that you can fill. Now, here's a little bonus material. I'm fortunate I live on the beach, so I have access to all this sand and nobody charges me for it. You guys can go out in your backyard or go to a, a lot and you can get a bunch of dirt. So here's what you do. You get a, a like a con contractor bag. You know what a contractor bag is? Contractor bags are like fucking massive garbage bags made of extra heavy material. Right. So get a contractor bag, get like a box of contractor bags, get a few of your old ass cotton T-shirts. Why cotton T-shirts? I'm going to explain this to you right now. Get these old ass cotton T-shirts. And what you do is tie off the sleeves that wrap the wrap the sleeves around, tie off the sleeves. So it ties off the top. So it ties off the neck. Now it's basically just just a nipple. Right. Fill the cotton T-shirt with as much sand as you can, stack it up, and then tie that off. Some will leak out. That's fine. I'm not worried about that. Tie that T-shirt off and then put that into the contractor bag. Inside the contractor bag, spin it twice, flip it, rewrap it, spin it twice, flip it, rewrap it. Keep doing that until you tie off the whole contractor bag itself. Now you can get even more gangster. You can put a few rounds of duct tape or gorilla tape around it. Now you have a beautiful medicine ball that will very easily fit into your rucksack. This is going to be more weight than you can handle. Most people complain, oh, I'm so strong. I don't have enough weight. Bullshit, dude. Bullshit. You fill up four of these fucking cannonballs of sand or a fucking loose dirt. You put them into a rucksack. You got two, three hundred pounds of uncondent unconventional weight sitting in your fucking hands. That's a problem. That's a problem for most people because you're not strong enough to move that. Can you lunge with that? Can you actually clean that and press that up over your head? Man, you want to talk about gangster strength. This is what we're talking about right now. So I'm helping you inexpensively. Guys, this doesn't cost a lot. I don't even know. Maybe maybe we're talking 100 bucks, 200 bucks, right? Maybe, maybe you start with one trailer mat. I would start with two trailer mats and then ease my way into the dumbbell world. And then get the, you know, with the rucksack and whatnot after that, because the dumbbells give a lot more specificity to specific muscle groups. Now, as we're, and I'm going to answer these questions here. So see, keep leaving your questions in the chat. I'm going to go two more minutes on this. And I'm going to answer your questions here. Now, extra, extra. So we, we talked about how to make actually your own medicine balls with, with the t-shirt, the contractor bags. Then we can add weight, put them in, inside the rucksack. If you can pick up a couple pedal kettlebells, Grab a couple kettlebells. I love kettlebells. I would suggest most of you anywhere between 8 and 24 kg, probably somewhere between 12 and 20 kg works best for most people. You can do a lot of exercises with those kettlebells. You can do, I mean, man, if you got a pair of, of 12 kg kettlebells and you're hitting sets of 50 kettlebell swings, like a minute on minute off of kettlebell swings, you want to run a Tabata style workout like that. Fuck, you're not going to be able to sit on a toilet for like three weeks or three days, I should say. Um, you're going to beat yourself up. Unilateral deadlifts, awesome. Like single arm clean and press, awesome. Skull crushers, awesome. Man, there's so much you can do. Side laterals, upright rows with these unconventional implements, great. So if you can get, again, a light and a heavy of the kettlebells, get those and also a barbell. If you can get a barbell, and I would suggest getting a barbell with bumper plates, if you can find them, steel plates are great. Why bumper plates? Because bumper plates are more um, um, versatile. 
you know, I'm not as worried about dropping a bumper plate on the trailer mats, uh, you know, letting it bounce off the floor a little bit. If I'm in a, a second story apartment, if I got some neighbors below me, I'm probably not going to go through mom's linoleum floor if I'm on trailer mats and stuck off in, into a corner of a room somewhere. Really? And guys, I, I speak with. <laughs> I speak with so many people. I speak with over a thousand people per year, probably going to hit over 2000 people this year in my one-on-one -on -one consultations. It's so funny to hear the stories. And I, I, I'm most of these video topics are coming directly from these one-on-one -on -one consultations. I realize that people around the world in, in, in Liverpool, England and, and, and Singapore and, and, and Dubai and, and, you know, um, Kazakhstan and, and, and Montreal and everywhere else, California, New York, wherever else. It's all the same shit. The world, Milan, the country is shutting down, right? The world is shutting down in many ways. We have these idiot political elites running around that don't know what to do, pandering for power, kissing the ass of those above them and the corporate lobbyists, coming with all sorts of bullshit pseudoscience and impractical solutions to a very real problem. I do understand the, the, the concerns in the world, but the solutions are garbage. The solutions are garbage irrelevant that may as irrelevant as that may be because we don't have a lot of power to sit in those seats and make the decisions therefore we can make the decisions in the seats we're in right now about our own life and what are we going to do what are we going to do is we're going to act locally i'm not going to let it affect me in my life i'm going to do everything i have i'm going to adapt and evolve and this is what i tell all of my one-on-one -on -one consultations let's do the best we can with what we have what do you have around you right now and they're like, um, well, my kitchen table. Okay, great. You got a kitchen table. You got a flight of stairs. Awesome. Holy shit. A kitchen table with two chairs. Do you know the type of dips that we can do? Walking lunges, single skips, um, unilateral hops up and down deficit deadlifts off the bottom stair. Are you kidding me? Are you crazy? You got twin babies in the house. Awesome. You ever do a baby push press? I have, <laughs> I have all this stuff. There's a beautiful video in, inside our exclusive membership group. One of our, our, our community members, she's a member of the Dolce diet.com's weight loss platform. And she's got, she's a stay at home mom. So what is she doing? She took her kid to the park. She, and kids on the swing, little baby, like a two-year-old. She pushes the kid. She drops down, does a body weight squat. She was banging out sets of hundreds of squats, she'd push and squat, stand up just in time, push and squat. So it's like a plyometric explosive burst, um, horizontal push. And she added a, a body weight squat into that. Hell yeah. She's going to be one fit mom in a few weeks, right? Adapting, adapting here. Um, I'm getting a little, I get motivated. I get passionate because I, I know under, I understand what's going on in the world. And I want to give you guys the simplest, the easiest, inexpensive ways to not have any excuses. Come with me with problems. I'll give you solutions. Come to me with excuses and I will tell you to kick rocks. This is not the place for excuses. This is the place for solutions. And I want to give you guys solutions. Do not dick around. You're, expect your gym to close. Expect it. It's going to close. And if it stays open, bonus. That's fine. Right now, my gyms are open. The gyms that I go to, nobody can train in my gym except for me. It's an invite only facility, right? But I don't train here. I like to go to the other facilities because it's the energy, the atmosphere. I want to be out and about. I want to be in it. But I'll definitely get work in here too, in my own home gym. And I have a home gym at my house that my wife primarily uses. I'll do a little, I'm going to do. I might do a video tutorial. I might do a Patreon page. I don't know yet. I'm not sure. I might do a Patreon that does a lot more behind the scenes stuff um, with my life. A lot of people have been asking for it. I don't know if you want to see that, that stuff, um, but I might do more of that. I'm a private person. You guys know this is an aside because I got a family, all right? I don't use, I don't, I don't, you know, pimp my family out like a lot of these other fitness experts. They're putting their one, two, three, four, five year old kid on fucking camera to get clicks and get likes. I don't do that with my family. I respect the privacy of my family. And I, I don't do a lot of that stuff. Um, but maybe a Patreon page, then we have a little bit of, of, of differentiation between kind of, I don't know, um, the good people and the bad people. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but anyway, anyway, and now I'm, I'm fucking ram ranting. I'm, I'm all, I'm all, all caffeined up right now. But I'm motivated because I want to see you guys making gains. All right. So now, 
Get back on track. Let's do the rundown, and I'm going to answer your questions. Here we go. So we have the trailer mats, right? Do not pay for gym mats. Get the half-inch trailer mats. We have a light set of dumbbells and a heavy set of dumbbells. 5 to 15s is a light. 25 to 50 is the heavy. And we also we have a rucksack that we fill with a bunch of stuff to make it heavy enough to do the heavier, throw it over your shoulder, throw it over one shoulder. Damn, throw your girl over one shoulder. What does she weigh? Like 250? Your girl up there about two bills or so? That's okay. I like a curvy chick. No worries. No worries. But really, get your girl up over your shoulder. She weighs one to 300 pounds somewhere in there. Dude, try banging out a few sets of bodyweight squats like that. Put her over on the other side. Do, do the honeymoon carry. If you can't honeymoon carry your girl for a set of walking lunges, if you can't take 20 steps holding your girl honeymoon style, bro, bro, your girl doesn't have a boyfriend. She's got a girlfriend. <laughs> that's not nice, Dolce. I know that's not nice. But really think about that. <laughs> can you honeymoon carry your girl? That's the Zercher squat. If you can't do that, you better get training. You better get training. Me personally, I would be embarrassed if my wife jumped up in my arms and I was like, uh, okay, babe, I got to put you down. I'd be fucking embarrassed. Not because it's not masculine, because I haven't done the right training. I haven't fucking pushed myself enough to, what if I have to carry my wife out of a situation? What if we're out there hiking and she fucking rolls her ankle? We go out all the time. Think about that. What happens in that case? I'm going to fucking drag my wife through the dirt. I, I mean, if I have to, I will. But come on now. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Well, how am I going to how am I going to slap her on the ass and take her upstairs to the fifth floor? If you know what I'm saying? Jesus. Remember, 13 year old humor here, my friends. All right. Um, and the last thing is, so we, we got the trailer match. We got the light and heavy dumbbells. We have the rucksack. We have the bonus kettlebells. We have the bonus barbell. You can also think about elastic bands. You can think about TRX. Big fan of TRX. They do a great job. Um, you know, I, I really like that company. I'm friends with a lot of the people over at TRX. I remember when they first started, I was friends with the team over there, still am. So super, super excited for them. They're doing great. Um, and then all like, you know, I mean, if you have access to a power rack, great. But really, I mean, power racks are meant for garages more than anything else. I mean, if you're fucking Jason Blaha, then you can set up a power rack in your fucking dining room. I don't know how he does it, man. He's got a pretty sick setup, actually, that he's got like right in his fucking dining room, which which that's like the the aspirational home gym. Like, don't give a fuck making gains before anything else kind of home gym. So I think that's actually really cool. He's got a great setup over there, but you don't need that. Like, If you have that awesome. And you can build up to something like that. You can build up to something like this facility here, man. I can train a, a full college wrestling team here in this facility. And everybody's got hard work to do at the same time. But you don't need that right now. So I hopefully hopefully this stuff helps. I, I started off with a really good idea of what I wanted to talk about. I hit all those points and I rambled and ranted quite a bit. And I dropped some off uh, um, some, some sus suspect humor in there. Um, and I think you guys appreciate that. Ray says, what up, Dolce? What up, Ray? Nick, uh, what's up, coach? Mike squats today. Bam! Four by eight at 315. Nick, you're crushing it, brother. Bam! Four by eight at 315. That's no joke, man. That's real work right there. Real work right there. How's that body weight doing, man? How's that recomp going, Nick? Mike Mumford, F you, Mike. Dan Skinder, I'm getting a stationary bike or elliptical for the house. Which one you think I should get? I would get an elliptical. I have an elliptical. I bought a stationary bike. It's actually, I bought it. Well, I bought an assault bike. I hate it. I never use it unless I, I want to torture myself or somebody else. I love the elliptical. I love the elliptical. I could cry. I could hurt myself on the elliptical. Like I can really push on the elliptical and, and just be dog fucking tired. Almost want to puke because I'll do those high incline fucking intervals. Two up, two downs. Um, I like the elliptical though. And the elliptical is, is, I think it's better full body um, than just a stationary bike. No, I'm not mad at a stationary. Uh, we have a Peloton also, which I do not like that seat up my taint. and does just doesn't work for me. I'm, I'm just not that dude. You might be, you might like that feeling. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't like it. I'm wondering about, well, like, baby, like, you still, you still in that elliptical? Like, really? Wow, you must really be working out. Wait a minute. <laughs> Um, Chris Liddell, I'm a simple man. I see a Dolce diet live stream and I hit play. 
Bang! And Chris Liddell, thank you for the reminder. Guys and gals, just subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification button. This isn't a gimmick, really. Subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. Hit that notification so you know when these live videos come out. And if you are so inclined, bang, bang, give this video a thumbs up just for the rucksack, right? Did you even think about a rucksack? Did you even think about getting some old smelly t-shirts, filling them up with dirt, wrapping them up and create these fucking cannonballs that you can actually train with? This is hardcore, old-school style training. Put those bastards in a rucksack and get fucking stupid strong. Stupid strong, my friends. Um, Nick L., I have a 2,000-square-foot personal gym in Chicago. Oh, now you are bragging, Nick L. I respect that. Um, any cool people from the Dolce community need a training spot, hit me up in the comments post video here to help. Everyone, my man Nick is in Chicago. He's got a 2,000 square foot facility. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. We're actually going to be holding Dolce Diet certifications and training courses at Nick's facility as soon as the quarantine pandemic rules are lifted and we can start gathering again. So mentally get in your mind, we're going to Chicago to Nick's gym. And if you're in Chicago in the area, contact Nick. Super cool fucking guy. Total fucking meathead, cerebral meathead like we all. Good dude. Fucking hard training. Fucking yoked. Getting it in. Hitting four by eights on 315 with 315. So gangster status. Leave a comment for Nick down below too. Um, don't be creepy though. Don't be creepy. Nick may or may not carry a fucking loaded firearm somewhere on his body maybe he does maybe he does maybe he doesn't i don't know i heard it's only four days a week and the days always change so i don't know so don't be a fucking creepy person out there um herman bang 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 f you dolce f you herman red army f you coach i put my bench in the living room bro that that's cool man i'm single of course yeah and you're gonna stay single bro <laughs> what you need you need to find a girl that's like oh my god that's so hot that's the chick you need. I would put that on my Tinder profile. Just a photo of your bench in the living room and see, see how many swipes you get. Um, <laughs> um, da, da, da. Trend hard and do some cardio. That's what most of the dudes are doing right now. Red Army says, I'm interested in supplements. Um, trend is good for what? No fucking way. Stay away from that shit. You'll fucking die. I'm cursing a lot today, too. So I apologize for all the cursing. Normally, I don't curse a lot. So I want to apologize. I'm, I'm really like reverting to like old meathead Mike here. Uh, I don't want to be doing that. Um, Terry Catlett says, Mike, thank you for everything. Terry, it is an honor and a pleasure. Truly, it is to have the time and spending the time with you. Also, guys, I'm on Parlor at the Dolce Diet. We just launched our Parlor page. It's going to be a lot more honest, in-depth conversation. I'm going to be able to speak my mind more so than Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter have allowed. Twitter or Facebook and Instagram started shadow banning me um, because not because I did anything political. I'm clearly not alt right. I'm clearly not progressive liberal. I'm like a total fucking like normal moderate. Like I'm the dude you want to be your neighbor. Like yeah, okay. I believe in the second amendment, but also my best friends are a married gay couple and like they're fucking over all the time. So what is the issue here? Like, you know, smoke weed high five, as long as it's legal, I think it should be for everyone. Um, pretty, pretty moderate, like, you know, good dude, take care of my family, take care of my neighbors. Like, you know, the whole thing, everyone live and let live. But anyway, so they started shadow banning me because I was pushing the importance or I was speaking on the importance of personal health and fitness and high BMIs being directly correlated to the negative outcomes of the current, um, I don't even, uh, disease. Is that what we'll say? Because I think our words are now being shadow banned and caught in the algorithm. So because of current global events, there's clear data that now shows high BMIs, um, comorbidities such as heart disease, diabetes, cancer, or respiratory um, issues, which are usually related part and parcel to high BMIs and obesity have a much greater incidence of long-term negative health outcomes and the higher percentage of fatalities is very directly related to these body issues. Well, I put a few posts out there. Instagram removed two of these posts. And since that point, I've been shadow banned. Directly, my engagement went down. They started Oh, I was gaining, I don't know, between 500 and 1,000 new followers a week on Instagram. I mean, that's pretty much been my speed for years now, for a few years now. It's decent growth, 
not massive growth, but it's a pretty good growth, right? Immediately, all of a sudden, I was still growing about the same, but I was losing exactly the same. I lose almost exactly how many new followers I gain week after week. I was like, one week, I was like, wow, how weird is that? What an irony. What did I say that was, and I was like, huh, well, like, no, my posts are all the same. And then the next week and the next week and the next week, and that's been the MO. So I've been stuck at about the same amount of followers for months now, months now. And slowly but surely, it's like, I'll, I'll almost like lose and then it'll kind of come back up and lose and then come back up. Like if I do like a promo or like a big sale, or maybe I do a video on here that gets, you know, more hits than normal, my IG page will go up and then I'll lose even more followers, which is really fucking weird. But anyway. So I started this parlor account now just as a way to speak on topics that might not be Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook um, appropriate. And I'll still maintain um, the, the, our, our, um, maintain our current level engagement on those platforms too, hoping eventually they come back. I like to engage and on those platforms, but that will be very much a, you know, kind of look at my lunch, look at my breakfast, maybe like, here's the way to, you know, do a proper body weight squat. But on parlor, I'll have a lot more context information. I'll share more evidence, data-driven evidence that I don't care if it hurts people's feelings. I'll be speaking the facts. So again, check out our parlor page if you're interested in that. And I'm not political, so it's not for any political reason. I really don't trust any politician, to be fair. Um, it's just to, I can speak more on the science so I can help you guys understand what you can start doing to improve your own health and fitness. That's really what it's about. Oliver! Oliver, what's up, my friend? Great to see you. I hope all is well, man. I look forward to getting out your way one of these days also. I want to get over there and, and, and see you and see your amazing team and, and just all the great things that you have. I, I miss traveling so much. I really do miss traveling. Uh, I would love to get out there. But anyway, anyway, what else we got here? Red Army, that was my cat typing. He likes you too. Hello, kitty. Um, and sits on my lap. Nice, nice. Um, Nick L, I need those 150s. I only have 110s, bro, I know. I know, man. I, I was like, I was like, I got the, the set. I like, ah, hundreds, you know, hundreds are good. I like hundreds. I'm like, all right. Like, you know, you, uh, hundreds, like I can, I can get a great workout, like a, a pressing workout with hundreds, right? I'm, I'm happy with hundreds. I can go up to like 125s, 130s on the incline. I hardly ever do flat pressing, but I can like, I can move the 130s with decent form if I'm training to do that. I'm much happier training at like hundreds on the inclines, really good form. Nice. Everything's good. I feel it. Um, I'm not trying to be a fucking power lift or any of that shit. Um, but any, but rows, I don't even know how many I can do. I could probably do easily good, good form, real good form of 50 rows with a hundreds easily. Like I have to be up closer to like one fifties on the bent over dumbbell row to get a decent back workout. I'm a former 700 plus pound deadlifter. I can deadlift 500 pounds with the flu. And I've kind of done that before. Uh, I said, if I ever can't deadlift 500 pounds, I'm just going to quit and take up bowling or golf. Um, simply because I spent 20 years training that style. I've deadlifted over 600 pounds hundreds of times in my life for sure. So, I mean, you think like, well, however that goes, but really it's, it's, just what it is. So I'm an average triple body weight deadlifter. I have a good leverage points to do so. Um, so that's why I, I had to have the, the buck fifties. I had to have them. Otherwise it's super frustrating. But one of the gyms I go to, they have the one eighties. They got the one eighties. They got the big, big boys up there. And I tell you what, going from one fifties to one eighty, that's a kick in the pants, right? So that it, that'll take me a couple weeks to real, like I'll move them. I'll move those 180s, but it's going to take me a couple workouts to really get that form, to take that, that kind of that hitch, that sway out of it. Um, Nick, man, when the, when the world opens back up, brother, you need to come on down, man, come down to Jersey, come down to the shore, come down in like spring, like late spring, early summer, when the beaches are popping, it's just awesome out here. Come down before they start charging to be on the beach though. But I, I got season passes, so you'll be good. Red Army, I use elevator weights. I get them from work. They are like kettlebells, but square, and they are free. Bro, that's awesome, Red Army. I love it. Amar Deep, Uncle Mike, I remember one of your, your videos. You talked about having a speech impediment when you were younger. Yes, I sometimes struggle with the stutter. Any tips on how you overcame your impediment? Well, number one, yes, I did. And some of you, Uncle Mike, it's, 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 
sharing, oversharing with Uncle Mike. I should have like a little music intro here. Um, I'll, I'll just briefly. So when I was when I was born, I was actually a, a massive baby. I was 11 pounds, eight ounces when I was born and I was born breech, which is backwards the wrong way. The doctors had to reach in, pull me out by my fucking legs. The umbilical cord was wrapped around my throat. It actually broke part of my my voice box, baby, and, and some other shit. And I can actually as I go through life, I can still feel that there's damage and dysfunction. I get really hoarse you know, throat and, and like sometimes it's even hard to swallow. But anyway, so I had like a speech impediment, never really diagnosed because back in the, the 70s, late 70s, I was born in 76. I'm dating myself in, in early 80s. Your parent didn't care about that, right? Is he breathing? All right. Tell him to fucking shut up or go to work. That's kind of the attitude back then. So but not very sophisticated. But regardless, I would eat dinner. I get in trouble all the time at dinner because everyone would be done dinner and I'm just eating super slow. Well, because my fucking throat was busted as a kid and it didn't work properly. And I just sit there and I would just stack food like a chipmunk. I would put food in my mouth and it would just be stuck in my mouth and I would get in trouble. I'd be all alone fucking and I wasn't allowed to leave the dinner table until all my dinner was gone. Like all my dinner was gone. Blah, blah, blah. I remember that, man. I still remember that. And then I'm I like just my dog. I, that's why animals love me because I just be like. At every chance I could, just like fucking man, I don't know, how am I gonna get out of this? Feed the dog, right? So I just think there's something wrong with me. Then I get into school. I think I'm just a normal kid, and my teacher's like, Yeah, Mike, uh, you're gonna go. Uh, was it Mrs. Sontag? Maybe I forget the lady's name. She had really short hair. She looked like like my Aunt Barbara, by the way, who's love Aunt Barbara, she's the sweetest lady ever. Um, and this lady was super sweet. So all my friends. All the class, they would go to like the playground time. They would have recess. And Mike, I would have to go to the fucking trailer. Now the trailer, <laughs> you want to talk about just childhood trauma. The trailer was like in the middle of the playground. It was literally like a, a, a trailer, like a mobile home, right? Like, is that, is that like, a, yeah, like a mobile home, like just in the middle. And it was all like just ghetto, right? And I have to go into the trailer. All my friends, and I hear them, ah! they're out there having fun and they're playing and i'm sitting there with this lady in front of me who's like squeezing my mouth and she's like snake snake and i have to just hundreds and thousands of times she worked with me and was very diligent working with me to correct an issue i didn't know i had i wish i could like replay myself i wish we had iphones back then so i could hear myself talk but evidently, I had a speech impediment bad enough to keep me in this trailer most of my early grammar school for a couple of years. So what I started doing is then on my own, I'm just kind of my, my attitude. I wanted to get out of the trailer. The only way to get out of the trailer and go and play with my friends was to ace this curriculum. So what I started to do is I started to bring all of her stuff with me. And she was great to give me all the flashcards and all her books and stuff. And I would just all day long, I would just work with it. And I would read all the stuff. And I would sit in the mirror and stare at myself. And I would work on it. So to answer your question, um, Amar Deep, I was very intentional. And I would, I would do it and I would read. So one of the biggest things that helped me was reading out loud and enunciating each word. And really like focusing, and I forget now, like the way your mouth is supposed to work and where your tongue is supposed to be when you speak. I had to be very mentally intentional and train myself to do these things that were unnatural. And I remember it like hurt too to do it because it was just my muscles didn't work that way. I think because of the, the, the broken neck or the dysfunction. I say broken neck because that infers like a spinal injury. It wasn't. It was actually my throat. So like a broken throat and i don't even think they diagnosed it at that point um and i'm sure i have a ton of just scar tissue which is what i get that pain a few times a year man it's it's uh, still to this day a few times a year it's I, I get it that pain is pretty bad um but anyway i became very intentional with speaking and with reading out loud and then i don't want to say i was self-conscious but i was now we had a spelling bee not long after, and I'll close this story here. We had a spelling bee and it was the principal and I was a really good student. And that's that for whatever reason, I was a really good student. I was always a quiet kid. I would sit there with my hands folded. Like I was just that kid. 
and I would pay attention and I would do all the work and my parents never had to ask me and the teachers never yelled at me. I just did my work, right? So we had a spelling bee. And I, I would be, maybe because I sat there reading so much all the time, I was actually really good at spelling. I like hundreds. I, I got like a hundred on every spelling test. And then we had a spelling bee. Like I was the favorite, right? I was the, the odds on favorite to win the spelling bee. But the spelling bee had to be public speaking in front of everyone. And the word, this is second grade. I remember this. The word was chipmunk. And the principal of the school was there and she was the one in charge. And I was like, chipmunk. And I threw it. C-H-I-M-P-M-U-N-K. I said, chimp, monk. I intentionally, my two-year-old little brain through the spelling bee simply because I didn't want to sit there and speak in front of the class. And I went and sat down. And as soon as I did it, I was like, what the fuck did you just do, dude? To this day, I'm telling the story this day like it just happened. That stuck in my soul to this day that I threw it up. I didn't want to be. I was like, what the fuck did you do? And then every other kid who came up that missed the word in my mind, I'm like, bam, 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 easy. Like I could have won this shit. No problem. But I mentally underperformed because I built some sort of anxiety about a situation that wasn't real. That was a formative experience for me in my life. As I look back now, because from that point forward, I had that effort attitude. If I don't know it, I'm going to try it. Put me up, put me in. I'll go. Let me do it. Let me see it. Let me try. I'll try. Let me try. I want to do it again. I want to do it again. I had this attitude of like, never, never quit. Maybe even to my own detriment in many ways, it was never quit, never back down. Always go, always go. So anyway, to answer your question, remember story time, doo -doo 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 -doo. story time with uncle Mike, where I'm, you know, that's real. That's real talk right there. That's real talk, real stuff, man. I, I got the scar. Like I say, all my scars are emotional, my friends. <laughs> That's not true. I got like 200 stitches in my face also. Um, Mike Mumford, bring on the eye candy. No offense, coach, bro. I know, man. I hear you. I hear you. I'm, I'm going to be uh, um, happy to edit those videos. Um, plus, you can fit two regular garbage bags in the contractor bag. Pay for themselves. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, we pay for garbage where I'm from. Got you. Um, Daryl Garcia, my brother, Daryl, what's up, my friend? Good to see you, man. Mike Dolce, how are you doing? I'm in the process of building my gym in my garage, bro. I can't wait to see. I know everything you do is top notch, bro. Daryl Garcia, man, script to screen back in the old days. Daryl made Daryl Garcia is the man who made me look good on the UFC fit videos, by the way, and makes many other individuals out there just look absolutely amazing um, um, um you know through through the the the, the skill of, of daryl's um production ability so daryl i miss you my friend i hope the family as well um and i know your garage gym is gonna kill it so definitely man throw me a picture i want to see it um and i'm available if you got any questions my friend just just ask away omar what's up coach dropping a thumbs up we'll replay later omar my man i'm Mardeep. Are you familiar with Pavel's simple and sinister kettlebell routine? I'm not, but I'm sure it's great. I am a fan of, of Pavel. He does a great job. Um, Herman. Tim says, if going with adjustable dumbbells, which would you recommend? I don't know the adjustable dumbbells. I know that they've gotten better. Years ago, they sucked. Great concept, but they sucked. Also, you know what sucks? Not giving this video a thumbs up. Bang, 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 bang. You want to not suck? Bang, bang. Give this video a thumbs up, my friends. It lets me know you're out there. It lets me know you, you care. And it lets the YouTube overlords know that you appreciate this content. So maybe they will share it with like-minded people just like us down the road. And we can help change more lives and build a very cool community. So thank you for that, by the way. Uh, what are bumper plates? They're basically rubber plates. Most of the CrossFitters use because they drop them uh, with poor form and uh, they bounce instead of crack the floor. They're rubberized plates. We got a few hundred. I think we got like five or 800 pounds worth here. Um, mostly 10s and 25s. Um, Herman, what is a respectable kettlebell weight for a 5, 740 pound male that mostly does MMA and Taekwondo? Honestly, um, I'd say anywhere between like the 12s and 24s, probably like a 12 to 16 is going to be get a pair of like 12 to 16s. So you're going to be great. Honestly, I can, I, man, I'll do workouts with 12 kg kettlebells. I'll get a great workout with those. 
much higher rep, much better form. You can do a lot more stuff with the lighter. The heavier kettlebells are kind of a pain in the ass to lug around. Um, so I like me typically, I'm, I'm usually between 12s and 24s. Usually like 20s is my go-to for most basic exercises. Remember a kettlebell, a kg is 2.2046 pounds. So a 12 kg kettlebell, it's like a 25 pound weight. Man, and it's, 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 you know, it's, it's got an offset center of gravity, which makes it really fun to use. Um, Red Army says, you should see the stuff that we used to do in jail. I know you can work out with anything if you really want. Um, they took all the weights away from prisons in Canada. We make water bags wrapped in a bed sheet. Um, I, were you formerly, were you, you incarcerated Red Army? No judgment, man. I got, you know, a lot of my buddies formerly were for all sorts of, you know, serious issues, not for, you know, creepy issues, but you know, usually, uh, um, you know, eh, whatever. But anyway, the, the most of the weights were taken away simply because they were used for violence. I think somebody was actually murdered with the weight and ruined it for all um, prison systems. I think that's the term, which I get it. It makes sense. And they ruined it. And I know all the inmates were like just super fucking mad. Wes Watson talks about it every so often. He goes off. He goes off. Right. That, that's the one thing that should have been sacred. Rainbow coach. How do you get rid of fat? My balls. I always thought I had a small pocket. Turns out half of my unit is behind a fat paywall. Oh, I get, I get. So you got that lower, um, um, that, that FUPA, that, that you know, fat upper penis, um, area, right? The, the FUPA. So that's that little, little kind of sack of fat that that's kind of, it's like the, the hood on, on top of your schlong, um, not to be crass. I think that's, you know, kind of like PG 13 terminology there. Um, well that comes with time, my friend comes with time and you really want to make sure that you're, you're eating properly. You're living a healthy lifestyle. Um, you probably want to get lots and lots and lots and lots of, of massages in that general area. I mean, I assume I'll have to ask Mrs. Dolce to see if we can experiment with that. Um, you know, because <laughs> I'm not. It's a theory. And to be real, to be fair, you know, to be fair, there's a scientific basis. So when you go home and you speak with your significant other, you can say, hey, this is what I found out on, on the, the, the Mike Dolce show today, that friction increases blood flow, which increases the efficiency of lipolysis or the reduction of body fat. So if you have fat in this area, one of the issues with this stubborn body fat is a lack of blood flow to the area. We actually need blood flow in order to release stored fat. Blood flow is a necessary component of fat loss. Did you know that? You did not know that. Therefore, certain parts of our body intrinsically have less blood flow than others. The the those problem areas with less blood flow have an impeded reduction or are impeded in their ability to actually lose fat. Therefore, therefore, Mrs. Dolce, if we can increase blood flow to this area more often, more frequently, then I'll lose more fat down there. That is actually scientifically valid. That is scientifically valid right there, my friends. It actually very much is. Uh, I don't think Mrs. Dolce is going to buy that because she's been the, um, um, the recipient of multiple tests, <laughs> theories, where she just looks at me and, and just walks away shaking her head, probably like, why did I marry this dude? Why did I marry this dude? I could have had that skinny, skinny doctor with the PhD um no 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 uh dude no spot reduction just work <laughs> um tristan says when should you I, this is this this show has certainly devolved today tristan when should i turn pro in mma my records four and one muay thai four and one kickboxing oh and one amateur also 23 years old i'd want 10 wins as an amateur I would definitely want 10 wins. I wish I had 10 wins as an amateur before they pushed me in the pro. I had zero fights as an amateur. They pushed me right into pro. First fight, pro fight against a savage. Assholes. I wish I had someone good behind me that pushed, that helped me fight. Tough. Everyone's tough. But give me a, a equally matched opponent. Give me the time to like figure this thing out real quick. Give me some ring experience before you, you throw me in the dark waters or deep waters, as they say, 
take your time, man. Take your time. But you can fight often. I got like Jesse Lee. Jesse Lee's on here all the time. Jesse Lee's had like four fights this year already. You could run through your amateur career in like, you know, two years max. Two years is not a long time, especially when you're a 23-year-old man. You could be turning pro by 25, 26. I would take, if I'm your coach, which I'm in your corner, you know, mentally speaking, I'm going to take my time. Rainbow, bro, I'm starting to finally lose some of the fat. It's crazy. I had to double my pecker size. Never knew I was so big. Hell yeah, bonus, bonus. Uh, remember, it's not the length. It's the thickness, as they say. And actually, it's both what they say behind your back. Paul says, built a kick-ass home gym. Got 415 in plates, power rack with pull-ups and dip station. Power block dumbbells up to 70 pounds. Battle ropes. Ooh. Um, man. What the hell? This thing just swung right by me. Uh, make excuses. Da, 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 da. But, wow, there's a lot more questions here. Let me try and run through these a little faster. Um, battle ropes training at home is greater than commercial gym. I don't disagree. Mr. Russ, coach, any suggestion for not having enough weight for dumbbell bench press? Should I just slow the tempo or switch to barbells? I would do both. I would slow the tempo for sure. I would do more of a, a, a fly, do like an eccentric fly all the way out. And then I'd boom, explosively press up. I would consider that um, canvas bag of uh, the rucksack that I spoke about. And I know you have access to rucksacks, Russ. Um, I more of the uh, unconventional implements. And also you might want to think about some deficit pushups with some weight on your back too. throw, uh, you know, put those dumbbells into a backpack since you're real tight to your back. How many deficit um, pushups can you do? Can you elevate your feet on one, two, three, four stairs and do push-ups that way? I'm going to get crazy with it. GB on fire. Hell yeah. Coach, I can't bench both my shoulder and pinch. I can only use machines. Rainbow the God, I never bench. I hate the bench press. I'm not a competitive power lifter. If you're not a competitive power lifter, you shouldn't be doing the bench press either. You should be focusing most of your time on the overhead press, on the parallel bar dip, and the push-up. Right? If you want to build a complete um, athletic um, functional shoulder girdle. That's what you should be doing. The bench press is a terrible, terrible, terrible exercise. And it's a terrible pec builder. If you want to do pecs, I would do more like a dumbbell um, modified incline, like a 30 to a 60 degree incline press. Paul says, bands are the shit. So much versatility. I use those to replace my cable exercise. I used to do, I don't, don't make excuses. You can work out with no equipment. That is the truth. Werber. Oh man, uncle Mike, I'm embarrassed. I can't get honeymoon my wife and i've been lifting since i was I, you can't honeymoon carry your wife it's okay it's okay i've been lifting since i was 17 now 27 but i have a lower back issues man i'm doing the wrong training coach me <laughs> that's funny but also imagine how impressed your wife will be if you scoop her up and a honeymoon carry her ass upstairs and you can actually walk up the stairs and not be like eh. Eh, like don't do it if you're going to look like a slouch because that is not going to go over very well you got to do it and just be like a fucking caveman right um and no matter what she weighed that's up to you 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 married her so if, if 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 you know she's pushing you know two bills three bills that's cool man kirby's cool i like it no worries but you better be able to honeymoon carry her so you either a got to get stronger or b you got to put her on a diet <laughs> one or the other baby i just signed you up to the dolcejdiet.com's online three weeks of shredded program she'll be like what? <laughs> like, don't worry. <laughs> I'm doing Zercher squats. Don't worry. I'll meet you halfway. <laughs> uh, Mike Mumford played again. Sports has some event deals on weight equipment. Awesome. Mike, thank you for that, bro. I'm Nick L crushing the recomp energy for days to make them gains. Mike Mumford, if you can carry her, maybe she needs to start working out. That's what I said. Right. Um, bump, 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 bump. Yep. 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 Red army. Oh, good to hear the gyms are kind of still open. Right. What brand way isolate cross flow grass flat or cold process cross flow micro filtered grass fed way isolate? Um, Sonia, what's up, Sonia? Um, my gym has been open this whole time. Mind you, my gym is in the basement. Nice. It's freezing cold in the winter, but golden in the summer. That's awesome, Sonia. Good for you. You're always making them gain, Sonia. Amazing info as usual, Uncle Mike. Thank you, Sonia. I appreciate that. Bang, bang, guys, give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. I appreciate you being here. And if you have not yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel. 
click that bell for notifications. That is not a gimmick. That notification bell is awesome. You get a little pop-up on your phone or wherever else and lets you know, hey, Dolce's live or we just you know, put out a new video. Doesn't bother you. It's, and it, it pops up for like three seconds. It disappears. Just so you know, I love when you guys are here on the lives. I go through and I answer every single question to the best of my ability. Um, Godea says, great moving to Parlor. I joined you there. Right on. Thanks for all the content. Thank you, Godea. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to speak with you guys on Parlor. also. Brian Henley, my man. Mike, I'm big on the bodyweight exercises now being 36. I feel they have helped me prolong my athleticism and explosiveness. Bend the knee, the Don. Ah, brother, I appreciate you, Brian. You, oh, and thank you for the donation, man. That, that's, that's too kind of you. Um, I, I appreciate that, man. But I'm so, super impressed with you, man. You, you're really killing it, man. Super proud of you. Um, also, hey, can you say hi to my wife, Jamie? Jamie, what's up, Jamie? Good to see you. You married a great man, and I know he married a great woman. I'm uh, super proud of you. All the hard work that you guys are putting in. I'm so, so just inspired by all the work, all the dedication, all the amazing positive energy that you're putting out there. I'm so happy and lucky to have you guys as a part of our little community here. Uh, you guys are amazing. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep supporting each other. Keep setting goals, crushing goals, changing the world, changing your family tree, all that good stuff. And um, I'm, I'm happy to be on the planet with you, my friends. Um, KC says, hey, Mike, what can I do fitness-wise with a really bad back? I will have to say you have to speak with your doctor. And you have to get a release, speak with your doctor, get a diagnosis and say, doc, what can I do? I really, really, really want to focus on my fitness while I'm fixing my back. What can I do? I cannot give you more information than that. And if anyone does, they're actually an idiot because I don't know what your issue is. Do you have a disc bulge? Do you have a, a fractured vertebrae? Do you have a nervous system or a, 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 a nerve issue? There's a lot of things. So I, I would not be able to say without an in-person evaluation, uh, but let me know once you do have a diagnosis, then maybe I can offer some, some insight to what to do next. Um, ha, spelling bee master and four time coach of the year. I actually, actually did in, in sixth grade, I did win a school wide um, writing contest, which was like all all grades, like eighth grade, seventh grade, and sixth grade. I won that in sixth grade. I won 50 bucks, baby. One of my, my prouder moments. So I did, I did battle my way all the way back. Um, and I was also voted in eighth grade, most likely to be an American gladiator. And that was, I guess it was pretty cool. I'll, I'll take that too. Um, Shannon, what's up, Shannon? What's up, Coach? Hope all is well. Life is great. Um, young Moy says, Jesus loves you. He died for our sins and resurrected on the third day. Um, well, we appreciate you for being here, Young. Thank you so much. And Young, also so you know, when I my graduating class voted me most Christian-like, most Christian-like, my graduating class, and it was the faculty. I actually went to a Catholic school, and I was um, um, nominated, voted as most Christian-like of my graduating class. How about that? If they only knew. So, Young Moy, maybe you appreciate that. Thank you for being here. Old Bap says, um, Salam, um, are push-up grips worth it or just a regular push-up? I actually, I like the push-up grips, but I do it with my dumbbells. I use my 15-pounders. The 15-pound dumbbell is the perfect push-up grip. And what that does, it gives you the perfect angle of your wrist. So instead of being bent back like that, it gives you this perfect angle right there. So you can actually hit your push-ups. And I really get to like rotate them however I want to. Plus, you can bang out those renegade rows. Um. Scott, coach, can you give the best calisthenics training for putting on size? Looks like the gyms will be closed again soon. Go to, yes, everyone right now, open up another tab, 20-Minute Fitness Network in YouTube. The 20-Minute Fitness Network in YouTube. Check out Mike Dolce's 20-Minute Fitness Network in YouTube. We started in the beginning of the year just to have a little something there. And it really, it was, it was cute. It did well. So there's four weeks of, I think there's 20 different workouts. It's a four-week program. And they stack on top of the other. They're about 20 minutes each. I, I, I shoot the shit. I talk. So maybe they're like 30 minutes with a little bit of talk. But it's about 20 minutes of workout time. Go and check out that channel. It's all based on in-home. Um, excuse me. In-home works. I use like maybe gallons of water, a couple light dumbbells, nothing heavy. 
the 20 minute fitness network. Definitely subscribe to that channel though, because I'm about to start adding a hell of a lot more content. We've been shooting a ton of content here in the facility for the launch, the upgrade, the rebrand, the Dolce diet.com. If you haven't gone there yet, you need to go to the Dolce diet.com. And I would strongly suggest if you're on the fence, sign up right now because the price is about to go up very soon. If you're on the fence, go to the Dolce diet.com. Use the burn fat promo code to save 30%. This is unlisted, unposted. Nobody knows about that except for you guys. Burn fat is a 30% discount lock in your rate and it will not be increased. So that gives you access to the entire four week and 12 week online platform, the membership program, the, the exercise database, the, the, the recipe database, your training logs, um, all sorts of predictive avatars, like all this, there's so much great stuff. It's robust. Um, but if you want to get in the best shape of your life, go there right now, check it out and, um, and keep me, keep me posted. So Red Army says, um, I got an assault charge against the male and props to Wet Watson. I hear you, brother. And that's like most of my buddies, too. You know, I kind of grew up in a, on a, a rougher track, you know. So um, there you go. Like, you know, I get it. You know, two guys get into a fight. They get arrested. They get, get do a little time because of it. You know, maybe the, the guy who wins the fight, even if he didn't start, and two of my buddies, that happened. They, they got jumped. They were fucking savages, right? They just destroyed the guys who jumped them, and then they got fucking thrown in jail for a little turn. Not cool. Um, uh, Wes is another influencer in my life. Yep, I like Wes's stuff too. Sonia, heading down to the gym now, going to have to work, so stay warm. Right on, Sonia. Good to see you. Anthony, F. U. Dolce, my wife and I just purchased three weeks of shredded on Sunday, and I already lost five pounds. Boom. Anthony, that's what's up, my man. I'm screenshotting that. I love that. You're making my day right now. Boom, right there. Down five pounds, just started on Sunday. What I what did I just say? The online four-week, three weeks to shredded program. You get one bonus week at the Dolce Diet.com. Use that burn fat promo code right now and save 30%. Anthony lost five pounds since Sunday. Three weeks to shred it is designed to lose 21 pounds in 21 days. You've heard me say it before, and I'm going to say it a thousand million times into the future because it works. It works. Obesity is an epidemic in this world. That's why I've been shadow banned literally on Instagram from saying, hey, like if 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 every single person or the vast majority of those who have serious negative outcomes of this current pandemic are overweight and obese and it's directly correlated to declining health, we should probably address that right now if there was only an online platform designed to lose 21 pounds in 21 days, why wouldn't we sign up for it? So I'll keep saying that. Go to the Dolce Diet.com, burn fat, save 30% right now. And you can start any day in the future, lock in that, that, that savings, and then start whenever you want. I'd say start Monday at the latest. Good job, Anthony. I'm proud of you. Um, how about a connection with shredded signs and have a club? I'd love to, man. I'm down. Drop it, drop something on their page. Let them know. I, I'd love to. I think they got a great channel. Um, it always feels weird if I'm like, hey, do you want to do a collab with me? I always feel weird. Um, I don't ever, I don't ask for any of that stuff. It's like, I never post. How often do I post any, like, um, of our athletes? We work with a lot of really famous people. You don't even know about it. You don't even know about it because I'm like, man, they're paying me to do a job. I'm not going to run around and like try and, you know, be a pro ho and, and just like all like post them on my stuff. So it, I just feel weird about doing that stuff. Um, but I would love to do, I mean, I like to do the collabs. I like to hang out with fucking cool, smart people for sure. I just feel weird about that. So if you guys want me to do like a collab on someone else's channel, maybe you hop on their page and let them know. I don't know. I'll, I'll I can do it too. Um, Red Armour says, anyone remember the 20 minute workout in the eighties, half porn, half workout. I wasn't sure who liked it more. My mom or dad. Off top. Sorry, wait a minute. Was that my channel? I might have done something, but it was it was PG-13 for sure. I never crossed that line. Anthony says the micronutrients are no joke. It works. Anthony, bro, I'm so happy to hear, man. Makes me so happy. You and your wife are doing the program together, which is the best, best, best case. And clearly your results are crushing it. And it's a whole. How much food is there, Anthony? The number one complaint about three weeks to shred it. There's so much food. Do I have to eat all this food? 
That's the number one complaint. Number two complaint, I got to go buy all new clothes. None of my clothes fit me anymore, Dolce. Thanks. I'm like, yeah, high five. Now you can walk around naked. Um, Wes Watson would be cool too, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rainbow, the God says, God bless you, coach. Quick UFC question. Um, what do you think Costa can come back after the KO and dry hump? Um, his manhood was taken. I feel bad for the next dude he fights. Costa's a beast, man. Yeah, I think Izzy was... That was that was it's it's hard to be a fan of Izzy. Honestly, it is hard to be a fan of Izzy. Maybe he's just a young man and he's still a little immature, but that is not that's not what I want to see in my world champions. Right? That's that's not an that's not a a role model. You look at a George St. Pierre. George St. Pierre, that's a role model, man. Well, George St. Pierre, if we talk about that version of the conversation, you're looking at a George St. Pierre. Right. That's that's the dude right there. Everyone should should aspire to be like a George St. Pierre or a Stipe Miocic. Those are class acts. Those are gentlemen like those are blue chip franchise athletes that you can build a company around. You know, I, I don't like to see that stuff. And yeah, I think Coast will come back. Coast is a beast, man. Um, Shredded Science will do so. Well, I don't promote. Spat. Here's the thing. And maybe this will be a great conversation with Shredded Science. I do not promote spot fat loss. This is the thing. What I do say is, so you, our whole body, we lose fat at a basic rate. We have efficient, non-efficient fat cells. All we want to do is through greater attention, through biochemistry and lifestyle and cultivating a specific environment vis-a-vis -vis increased blood flow, we can actually help our inefficient fat cells lose rate more appropriate to the efficient fat cells. So there is no spot reduction. The only difference is I am then I am able to help these inefficient fat cells become more efficient. So we will see a greater, what appears to be a greater targeted fat loss, but it's not a targeted fat loss. We're simply removing the obstruction. That's all it is. So it's, it's like if you have a clogged artery, God forbid, we're removing the plaque. That's all it is. So then you get the same blood volume, blood flow in that once debilitated artery than you as all of the others. Does that make sense? So it's not spot reduction. Many people misconstrue it as such, and it might sound like that. This is why having like that, a, a deeper um, understanding of biochemistry will help this. I would love to actually, that would be a good one to discuss maybe with shredded sports science. Red Army, be well, my friend. Uh, hope all's well. It's been fun. Um, Jesse Lee, Jesse, we were just talking about you, my man. Um, Ost, coach, four pounds away from championship weight on a 13-day notice fight, primed and ready to go for Friday night fights. Jesse Lee took a fight on 13 days notice, and Wednesday before weigh-ins, he's already within four pounds. Right? That's what we're talking about. That's everybody give a... A, a, a nice clap to Mr. Jesse Lee out there getting it done. Jesse, we are all in your corner, brother. I was talking about how awesome you've been, how busy you've been staying focused, doing, you know, staying on, on your fight uh, career. And, and a young man said, Hey man, like how many amateur fights do you think I should have before I turn pro? And my, my concept was more take your time, get a lot of fights. I said, look at Jesse Lee. Look at how busy Jesse's been this year. I would, you've had like four fights or so this year during the pandemic, three, four fights. Shit. You've had like three fights in the last two months or something like that. Anyway, anyway, clap, clap. All right, guys and gals, it is time for me to jump off right now. I appreciate you all for being here. Bang, bang. Give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, I certainly greatly appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't clicked that little notification button, you will get notified so I can answer your questions. I answered every single question today. Awesome. As I almost always do, unless I'm late for dinner and I don't want to keep uh, the family waiting, but I often do. Sorry, guys. Um, what else do we have? Remember that burn fat code, save 30% at the Dolce diet.com before the new site launches. The new site is about to launch maybe even tomorrow. It might launch tomorrow. I'm super pumped about. And if you're already a member, you've already paid the price. You won't have to pay any more money. You are grandfathered in at the 30% discount. Why would you not do that? The Dolce diet.com promo code burn fat, all one word, save that 30%. And then you're locked in for life. No worries there. 
What else do we have? And also I'm on Parler. Come check me out on Parler where I can have non-PC conversations and tell you guys what I really think. I am not political. I think all politicians are liars and cheats and criminals and all they care about is power and, and their party affiliation. They don't care about us as individuals. I care about you guys as individuals. And unfortunately, the social media tech giants do not want us to speak about real evidence-based health and fitness science. That's what I'll be speaking about more so on Parler. So if you want to check me out, check me out on there. I appreciate you guys. You are all awesome and amazing. And until next time, boom.